All around the world, young people have been making tremendous efforts to get their voice heard. But not all of them experience activism in the same way. Because when we look on the news, we see the white kids who are doing, making a difference, and we see the white kids who are speaking out. But then we see some of the same black and brown kids who are saying the exact same thing and are not getting any attention for it. In the midst of such movements, one group particularly stands out. Students. In London, we interviewed five young people, recent graduates, taking a gap year, or currently studying, to know more about the realities of being a student activist. I mean, I never dreamt to be an activist, and that just happened because um, they approached me in my academy. Uh -huh. So they came to me and they said, what are you angry about? Uh -huh. And that was one of the questions. And I was like, well, I'm angry about a lot of things. Uh -huh. There's way too much injustice in this world and too many things that uh, people go through in the UK. Uh -huh. So why wouldn't I be angry? Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say I've started activism. I think as people of color, as black women, just waking up, waking up, leaving the house and yeah. trying to gain access to spaces that other people will have spaces, have access without, you know, trying or making any effort to, it's just an act of yeah. activism already. That's why I felt I had to be a part of the campaign to build that change because I couldn't see myself standing at the back and not letting, or just letting it happen by itself. But it's amazing that safety achieved amazing results and then I was able to go to uni, but then I didn't play any active role in this. And I felt like it was my role to do that because my younger brother, he's going to be going to university soon. So there needs to be someone who acts as a role model so I went through it, so my brother didn't have to. So. A lot of people can find activism to be quite um, shaming, quite in your face, like, we're doing this, like, what are you doing about it, you know? And I think people can, can take it quite personally, um, for good reason, because I think it can feel like a privilege thing to be an activist. It can feel like, well, you can afford to protest, you can afford to skip class. Because some people may have the luxury of not working, having enough funds to be part of a campaign and be and do that. But I think for people like us, we don't really have to get that choice because we have to renew our status, pay a lot of money into it, and we need to have a job to do it. Like in this country, you can become more powerful than you think. Mm -hmm. You have more freedom to express your ideas and. I know different countries have different ways of, um, in my country I could never be the activist I am right now, but I know that for a fact in this country they care about what young people have to say. So one of the biggest things that comes out of a campaign is the people's mental health. So that's a very taboo subject because most of the communities in the campaign are from African, Caribbean or South Asian backgrounds and that's still very taboo uh, in our communities. They don't recognize uh, mental health as a big thing. My well-being, mentally, I, I mean, I, I go down, uh -huh. really down, and sometimes I don't go out. Uh -huh. But I feel like it is about having people who encourage you, mm -hmm. having those people that work really hard. So I really, I have this campaign coach that every time I feel down, I have a one-to-one -one with her. But something like Justice for Workers is more about, we're not that important, we're just supporting the workers' fight. So it's very much more of like a fight about principle and about kind of just support and, and solidarity with, with another group, that's the effective group. So we don't really talk much about like what's going on with us, how do we feel, um, that's just how it is I guess. I think that if we were on the streets protesting about this, we will not be able to get where we were. Uh, yeah, or yeah. where we are right now. So mm -hmm. it depends on the matter itself yeah. and how effective it will be. Protest is really important because we're allowed to protest in this country and as students we're allowed to protest. Um, and at the end of the day we're not protesting for our rights, um, we're just supporting the workers who decide to protest, who decide to strike. So it's, I think it's important to have a student body behind the workers because their fight exists independent of us. We're just a support group and the solidarity group for them. Um, and as students, we have a lot of power to support people who have less of a voice at our institution. Students. So I think when it comes to different campaigns, maybe there, there needs to be more collaboration with the KCOSU, the institution, and the student union. So maybe they need to come together and work on campaigns. Because I feel I see a lot of campaigns being done by students and being done by the university. But there's that sort of gap where why can't they come together to do the same thing because the students have the power and the institution has the resources.
the campaigns at UCL, at least, take a stand against UCL as an institution. So I don't really see collaboration being possible. The current provost of UCL is very business minded. Well, and I think some people looked at the occupation of thought oh, that to be extreme. And I remember telling someone, no revolution happens with you asking please and thank you. So something had to be done. Yeah. And that was our way to say, actually, it's enough because we need to stop just adjusting into the system. We just have to be and occupy the, sp the space that we are entitled to. I, I would never personally talk to police and actions. Like, I didn't want to hear what they had to say. Uh, I didn't want to say anything to them. Uh, and I think there's a lot of individuals like that in Extinction Rebellion that don't. But, but then again, there are a lot of people who feel uncomfortable in not engaging with, um, with others. And they kind of don't see the police um, as this sort of institution. They see like more the human side of the person, um, and I kind of get that. Like, sure, black men have to be very cautious yeah. about not entering escalations because the minute they enter escalations, it will be a whole different playing field. Yeah. Of the police will be called yeah. uh, state violence. They'll be targets. Yeah. They'll be targets. So we're very careful of the dynamics. And so I have had conversations with people of color who have come to the meetings and they're saying, you know, like. It, it is something that's really a problem and it relates to the issue of arrests within the movement obviously because the police treat um, people differently um, based on their colour so that's something that is a real concern of mine um, and, it's, and it's kind of you know how is it that we can enforce change because a big part of XR's theory of change is that we need to you know, have mass arrests, we need to fill up the, uh, the justice system, we need to clog it up um, but, but clearly we need to work with a wider set of actions and I think that's what Extinction really need, need to do a lot more of. It depends on what kind of activism it is. It can take a lot out of you. So this sort of activism where you have to constantly share your stories is quite, it takes a toll on you. So it's very hard to share something that's so personal to you continuously. So it sort of breaks you down every single time. Or you have to be a very strong person to share, go up uh, on the stage and share your story in front of the school. So it's a very big decision to go into in the first place. We kind of forgot the power dynamics within people of colour or BME people. So I think it was having tough, difficult conversations saying, yes, we're fighting one system. We know that that's our, go our end goal, but it's far bigger than that. It's far more complex. It's far more multi-layered. We have to address the power dynamics within each other. We have to address our positionality. We have to hold ourselves to account. Yeah. And those questions that we have to ask ourselves that we didn't, because we were so fixated on the structure rather than ourselves and how we're complicit in the structure and how we become complacent in academia. And it was difficult conversations we had, to ha we had to have with ourselves and with other people. We're, we need to do the non-violent direct action trainings, we need to really inform people about the consequences of, of their arrests. Um, and in particular cases of, of the last year, that's not happened, you know, because of this sort of desire to act now and to do stuff very quickly. So, so, so that's definitely something that I've learned from, um, is when things do go wrong, you kind of take a step back and you think like, actually that like, we can really put people in danger here. Obviously because for us it's just we don't become activists and then stop come six o'clock, we go yeah, home yeah. and we go back to our yeah. ideal life. Yeah. It's just a way of a way of living. Yeah. So um, and so yeah once you kind of experience that I feel like it's very difficult to go back, you know, I feel like that, that feeling of freedom um, is, is kind of there and, and it's not something that I feel that I could get from um, from another kind of job really. So I lost touch with a lot of people I grew up with and then the campaign became a new family. So when I joined them everyone was in the same situation. So it was the first time I could share something and people understood it. I think one piece of advice would be to go about everything with empathy and that's not just empathy around the cause but also empathy outside of the cause. I think it's really important to put empathy and humanity and warmth and compassion at the center. Despite the difficulties, students have been increasingly engaging to make their voices heard and have their demands met. While their experiences differ, they all have in common a drive to make our society slightly more just through community. In this phenomenon, London students are not only making a contribution to the city, but to the world. 